Hello students, we are talking about saw stop table saw safety today. Let me put my GoPro on and uh, make sure that you can see. And uh, yeah, this is the test. You've got to pass by 100%. So I thought I would show it to you as well. And uh, I'm gonna unlock it uh, in my on my YouTube channel for you after you've taken the test for the first time. So then you can go in and correct it and make sure you get your 100% so you're ready to performance test on the machine so then you can use it for your projects. All right, so first question on our saw stop table saw is uh, you must use the guard unless specific permission is obtained. Guys, that, that goes for all machinery. Always use the guard unless you have permission for me and typically you won't. I'll, uh, if it's a special setup, special cut, I'll be the one doing the cut for you. Okay, so we want you using the guard to protect your fingers on all machines. Okay, next question. You must use a push stick when cutting wood unless six inches wide. True or false? So, six inches wide would mean um, that if it's under six, the groove's not going to be showing right so you're going to be using the push sticks to keep your fingers six inches from the blade if it's wider than six the groove will be showing and you do have room to use your hands okay let's go ahead and make a cut here uh, straightest edge against the fence right we'll take off a uh, sliver and we've got our blade height set, maybe a little bit high, right? We only need a quarter inch of blade showing above our part. So I used the blade height adjustment, unlock, adjust, and lock, all right? So left push stick stays in front of the guard, right push stick pushes it through, trying to keep it tight to the fence all the way off the table, okay? When the right push stick comes up to the left, Take the left away and push it on through. Notice my positioning right in front of the guard. It stays there. The, the right hand push stick, it goes on the blade half. So if this is the midpoint of my piece, this would be the fence half. This would be the blade half. If we go on the fence half, look what's, what, what happens. It pushes it away from the fence. If it comes away from the fence, it changes your dimension, ruins your part, and it could come back on you as a kickback. So if we go against, uh, yeah, the right push stick in position and left push stick in position, we're on the blade half, right? And you have a lot more uh, ability to keep it tight to the fence if you're away from the fence with your push stick. So we're talking the blade half of your piece. So let's cut it. Okay, position for, with the left, position with the right, using that left to keep it tight to the fence and the right to push it through. Keeping it tight on the fence. And we uh, turn it off. Now, we don't want to reach in for the scrap. That's a safety question. Wait till the blade stops and then recover your small piece uh, and it'll go in the uh, scrap box, okay? So that's a narrow piece um, using push sticks. All right, so the answer was true. You must use push sticks when cutting less than six inches wide. The splitter must always be uh, used when cutting through stock. We just cut through stock. What's a splitter? I didn't show you that on the last video. This is the splitter, okay? It separates the scrap piece from your piece that you've measured for that you're keeping, okay? The piece that is your project part always should go to the right. That's the accurate piece, the one that we've set up our fence to measure. And the scrap is on the left. So the splitter separates the two. Also, I didn't show you on the last video, we have anti-kickback fingers. That's another absolutely wonderful thing about the saw stop. Do you see? 
but we've got four, two on this side, two on the other side. It won't let that board come back as soon as it uh, passes the anti-kickback fingers, it will not come back, okay? Because it's grabbing them. It's grabbing your piece on both sides. So it's got to come forward, okay? So those anti-kickback fingers were a wonderful marvel for some uh, engineer developed that to keep this machine a lot safer. Okay, uh, so the splitter must be used and it's a part of the guard, so there you go. That's true. Okay, true or false, it is safe to remove shortcuts, cutoffs when the blade is still moving. I just went over that. Those cutoffs or scrap need to be taken care of after the blade stops. Okay. Uh, next question. The blade can be set to any height as long as it cuts through the stock. Is that true or false? How high above the stock should it be? Remember? Quarter inch, right? So this doesn't make sense, does it? If we were to take our blade height way above our piece, that's exposing you to blade we don't need to be exposed to. So quarter inch so that uh, question was false wasn't it all right that it could be set at any height that's false quarter inch above it is safe to saw warped or twisted wood this is false it is not safe for any machine here's what happens if it's twisted it's going to move on you as you're trying to cut it that's a big problem it needs to set flat, okay? This one's even got a little bit of warp on it, so I would probably cut it this way. That's the most stable side, and we would send it through the machines that way. So you need to check for stability and send it through when it's uh, stable. If it's really warped, don't do it, okay? Let me uh, come and get me and we'll decide whether it's uh, scrap and needs to be thrown away or if I could take the warp out of it. Okay, do not cut through warped lumber. Okay, what's the next one? Number seven, it is safe to freehand without using the fence or miter gauge. Well, this is the miter gauge, right? We said we would use it for cross cutting. Why won't that go in now? So this is cross cutting across the grain. This is ripping using the fence with the grain. So this would be free handing. No miter gauge, no fence. Does that look safe to you? No, 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 no. It's gonna come back on you every time. No free handing on the table saw. Matter of fact, Every machine, pretty much, you're going to have a fence, right? A table and a fence that's helping you to guide it. Okay. All right. So it is not safe. That's false. It is, uh, the question says, is it safe to freehand without fence or miter? No, false. Next question. The operator should stand directly in front of the saw blade when operating the table saw. So, if I'm cutting through this piece here, groove is showing, okay? It's asking you, is it safe to stand right here in front of the blade? No, it is not, because if it kicks back, it's coming straight back. It's not going at an angle. So you want to stand to the left of the blade. And then if it kicks back, it's going to miss you. It'll go straight back. It won't come out of the saw at an angle, okay? so. Um, the question, once again, is the operator should stand directly in front of the saw blade? That's false. To the left, even slightly to the left, you're okay. Whether you're using your hands or push sticks, right? We don't want to be directly behind it, but to the left. Okay, next one. The operator should devote 100% attention to the stock when sawing, uh, operating the table saw. 
Sounds logical, doesn't it? Every machine, you want to operate it using 100% of your attention. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Next question. The stock edge that goes against the finch should be trued, as in jointed so that it is straight. True or false? That is true, right? Straightest edge on all machines goes against the fence. Okay, straightest edge against the fence. Because if it's not straight, it's gonna move on you, right? That's, that's right, so straightest edge against the fence. You may have to join it, okay? If you've got a piece that doesn't have a straight edge, join it first to get it straight, then rip it on the uh, table saw. Next question, you must wear eye protection when operating the table saw. Duh. We've said even if one person is operating machinery in the shop and everybody else is over the tables, you still have to have your safety glasses on. Always, always, always. The tell-off person, next question, should never pull stock through the blade. So if I'm cutting a big piece like this, okay, I'm probably going to need some help. That's what the tell-off person is doing, right? So they would be back there, and I'm running here, running it through. What the question is asking is, uh, should they pull it through or not? No, all they do back here is support it. They support it, okay, for the person operating the machine to run it through. Because what happens is, if that person back there pulls it, he may pull me into the machine. 